So my name is John Fetterman, and I am the uh, mayor of Braddock, Pennsylvania. Um, Andrew, you stole two minutes of my time. Jeez. <laughs> have them back. Excellent. Can I have my presentation? There we go. OK. All right. Getting started. OK. As I mentioned, I'm from Braddock, Pennsylvania. And I, I don't know, I, don't, I never presume to expect anybody else in the audience to know exactly where that is. So we just go through kind of like the, the basics uh, of Braddock. So Braddock, Pennsylvania is 10 miles roughly from downtown Pittsburgh. It's not a large community. It's actually 2 thirds of a square mile, uh, geographically speaking. It was incorporated in 1867, and as of the 2000 census, it was just shy of uh, 3,000 people. What makes Braddock significant? It's where Andrew Carnegie got his start in the steel industry. It is literally, quite literally, essentially the birthplace of the American steel industry. Without Andrew Carnegie and steel, Braddock never would have existed. This is what Braddock Avenue used to look like back in the mid-50s. It was a population of over 20,000 residents that had the modern day density of a Brooklyn or some of these other major cities. So again, just realize that if you look at that picture, you probably couldn't tell that apart from, say, a picture of, of uh, Manhattan from that similar period of time. Again, just a vintage picture postcard to kind of give you the grandeur and the, the, the level of wealth and development in Braddock. Once again, another one. And again, if you, you go back in history and you do a survey of what exactly was in Braddock, this is just a, a brief summary. 30 tailors, 25 show stores, 14 jewelers, 5 banks, 3 auto dealers, 51 barbers. I think it's remarkable, 14 furniture stores in a community that's 2 thirds of a square mile large. Remarkable level of prosperity and economic density. Today, there is none. You know, I could have just put one giant zero on the screen, but if you just break it down, it just really does drive home the fact that this entire town, there's been an implosion both in terms of population, but also in terms of socioeconomic infrastructure and business. Braddock is the poorest community in Allegheny County. Allegheny County is the region that encompasses not only Pittsburgh, but an additional one million people, making it one of the most populous counties in America. Median price of a home, that is not a typo. That's $5,200. And I actually see it's probably not that high now. I would say it's under 5,000, particularly since that's an older figure before the economy went south last year. Median household income, once again, not a typo. You compare 17,500 to the Pennsylvania average of 48,500 and the national average of 50,000. So you're talking extreme poverty. And employment generally tracks two and a half to three times more than the national or state average. Again, what happens when a community implodes and tears itself apart? Destructive behaviors emerge. And if you, can, if you look at how many multiples above and beyond the average in Pennsylvania is, uh, it's, it's really staggering. Arrest, for example, 3.9% compared to nearly 16% in, in our community. Violence and drugs, the natural uh, logical offshoot of all of this. You know, you look at the threatened with a weapon, 23% compared to the 4% uh, average. So you've got a community that has suffered a 40-year decline, and these are the, the logical results. That's a picture just taken. It wasn't doctored to make it look more dramatic, but that's... You know, if you take what Camden looks like now outside the door, you know, this is on the, the, the far end of the spectrum there. That large belching uh, apparatus is the Edgar Thompson plant. Ironically, it's the last functioning steel mill in the region. It was the first, and now it's the last. These are just some images to kind of convey uh, what, what, what Braddock was like when we kind of took over. Ironically speaking, of course, no dumping. Uh, abandoned buildings. 90% of our community is in a landfill somewhere. We lost 90% of our buildings, homes, and businesses along with our population. Glorious old architecture that will never come back had to be taken down. That building was not being demolished. That actually felt, the, the back of it actually fell off. Old historic mill worker houses, an old movie theater, a former restaurant, Inside what a typical house looks like, I don't know if anyone's seen pictures from Hurricane Katrina in the Ninth Ward, 
very analogous. This is what the inside of our typical abandoned home, which we have many hundreds in our community, looks like. This just happened about two months ago during the summer. This, this beautiful old building actually fell into the street. So we had to call the Allegheny County and uh, apply for emergency demolition funds to have to take that building down. The town literally is crumbling apart. Beautiful old historic uh, churches left abandoned. So this brings us to what's Braddock's unique problem. It's like, what can be done to help re-energize and at least stabilize a community that's lost 90% of not only its population, but everything that makes a community a community. This is what we did when we took office. We focus on the community that we have. Gentrification is a really hard buzzword. Let me assure you, Braddock is gentrification proof. So, <laughs> so but, but much more importantly, from a moral perspective, um, one of the things that we did was we, we started with a balanced approach. We looked at taking care of and improving the quality of life for the community that we have, but we also talked about we need to bring people from outside Braddock and bring them in to help rebuild the community and energize it. So we focused on several different initiatives. Youth employment, we have the largest youth employment program, summer employment program in Allegheny County. Repurposing, we opened playgrounds. Most communities take playgrounds for granted. Playgrounds were closed for six or seven years before uh, we took office. And reduce crime through effective policing. Green and the arts, vital, not only for the population that we have, but also for bringing people back into the community. We open up the first art gallery in the region. Urban agriculture, you know, uh, can't overestimate the importance of that for a community like Braddock. We have over 1,000 vacant lots that have little to no economic value. Urban homesteading, people have moved uh, to our community from all over the region. Just a picture of the, the Braddock Youth Project working on uh, quality uh, legacy art work. This welcome sign is actually 12 feet by 12 feet and was erected as you enter into the community and it actually won Pittsburgh Magazine's best na neighborhood artwork uh, of the year. Repurposing a, van a, a vacant lot to a, a new bus uh, terminal or bus stop with mosaic work. This building, I bought this building almost exactly a year ago for $16,000. That's 40,000 square feet of, of space. And that is um, eight stories tall. So it gives you the scope of it. That was an old furniture store in the community. So we've had you know, different art installations there. And we're working on now actively to turn those into kind of like live workspaces for, for artists. This is an old church that we bought. And we're repurposing that to be a community center for the young people. These, these were three abandoned homes on Washington Avenue, actually the, the last structure standing on the street. We, we uh, purchased those for actually about $7,000, and we converted those to uh, pro provide housing for young people that have exited the foster care system and otherwise would not have any homes. Just a, just a kind of a before and after shot to kind of give you the idea of the condition of some of the properties that we take on. Just another example of the Jones Avenue Church. Again, this beautiful former ecclesiastic space literally left to the elements to collapse. Clean out days. Again, this is our main thoroughfare. Repurposing this vacant lot. This was an overgrown, we have an invasive species in our part of the region, it's called knotweed. It's in the bamboo family, takes over everything in vacant lots uh, on our main thoroughfare. And now it's become the community's only green space where children can play and, and uh, residents can just have a picnic lunch and uh, hang out. And vegetables have been planted there. And it's you know, self-service. Heirloom tomatoes, regular produce that appeals to uh, more traditional taste. Braddock Farms, the first organic urban farm in the region, coincidentally in the shadow of the last steel mill in the region. Just another beautification project with our Braddock uh, Youth Project. 100 kids working here this summer, by all means the largest in Allegheny County. We had a bunch of debris from a building that we took down, so we talked to a mason, a local mason, and we built an outdoor community bread and pizza oven from the discarded materials, and that's used to host community events in conjunction with uh, the first gallery in the area. Now we want to, the culture events that we've developed to bring people into the community, 
because um, there has to be a balance. The solution to Braddock's problems, if there in fact are any, will not come exclusively from within. We have bl Braddock block parties that have a community, strong community flavor. You're not going to find a lot of people from shady side or wealthy communities coming in to participate in the Braddock block party. Easter egg, we make a big deal out of holidays because many families can't afford to, to provide their own and trick-or-treating, which is coming up in a couple weeks. Other fun activities, if you can beat the mayor arm wrestling, you get my paycheck. <laughs> and working with Braddock's children. This, is an, this was an abandoned Catholic middle school in, in the community, and now we've repurposed it to be the area's only art gallery, and we've had a lot of different great shows uh, there. I got a call two weeks ago from the Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh, and it was a really unusual email. It said, uh, Shepard Ferry's in town for a major installation. Does everyone know who Shepard Ferry is? The Obama Hope signs and a really famous uh, artist. And he's like, hey, he's a fan, and he wants to come out and see Braddock. So he showed up at 6 o'clock in the evening, said, I'd like to do an installation. Well, we've got an abandoned building right here for you. So in an hour and a half, we've got a, a, a custom Shepard Ferry installation on the main thoroughfare. That Jones Avenue Church, which was formerly abandoned, we transitioned ownership of that to an arts collective known as Transformasium, and they're in the process of fixing that up. We recruited the area's only first green business as well, fossil-free fuels. If anyone's ever heard of what a grease car is, it's, uh, they, they retrofit diesel engines, whether it's in a car, bus, um, or uh, what am I missing, truck, and it runs on vegetable oil. So they've been open now for two years and doing fairly well. Urban homesteading, buy this house for $5,000, that's a, that's a lie. It was actually $4,300. And this was a couple that came from Chicago and fixed it up. And as you can see, it really looks lovely. So has any of this, what was the state of Braddock when we, we took over in, in 2006? I just did a random query on the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette website and just picked some random headlines that were generated in the 2005 news year cycle. Um, I think there were five or six homicides in the community. And bear in mind, for a community that's under 3,000 people, that's a remarkable uh, level of violence. In, 2006, in 2009, I'm proud to say, we haven't lost anybody in 18 months. And every other metric in terms of crime statistics has also gone down. Now, normally, this is where I would have stopped my presentation because it has kind of like a feel-good, uplifting story uh, to it at the end. Um, but we had a major development four days ago. So I was forced to actually consider whether or not I could even come here. But since I was fortunate enough to be able to do that, I had to alter my presentation. And one of the things that it really reminded me of a quote. Now, some people, have anyone ever heard of um, the Road by Cormac McCarthy, the book. Well, the movie that's coming out uh, next month was actually partially filmed in Braddock. So Hollywood knows where they need to find good post-apocalyptic America. <laughs> so, but again, you know, in that, in that same theme of Cormac McCarthy, there is a, there's a quote that really reminded me of the, the last development, where it's, this country's hard on people. You can't stop what's coming and it all ain't waiting on you. That's vanity. No, actually, this is vanity. V mortified. My wife texted me on Tuesday evening, last Tuesday evening, and said, uh, honey, you're on the cover of The Atlantic. I'm like, what? Like, it, again, it was kind of like a mini Obama Nobel shock, I would imagine, because <laughs> I, I, I have, uh, I, have, I have no business being on the list of some of the distinguished thinkers that are, that are on that list that truly deserve to be there. Um, and for all that you know, is worth, and, and I, I didn't really let it sink in, but two days later became, became an announcement that literally shook the community to its foundation. Two days later, the largest employer in town, the only healthcare provider in the region, announced that they were shutting down in 90 days. A loss of 675 jobs 
and the source of 22,000 inpatient emergency room visits. So how do you process that? You know, you, uh, at 5.30 the night before on Friday, I get a call saying, uh, John, uh, we're going to the media tomorrow. We're shutting down UPMC Braddock. Now, anyone who's from Pennsylvania and ever heard of UPMC Braddock, that's the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. They are an $8 billion healthcare conglomerate and powerhouse. The battle, for health, the battle for healthcare is being played out right in the middle of our community because obviously, as UPMC has figured out, you can't make money under the current regime serving the poorest communities in America. And as a result, they're shuttering a 277,000 square foot facility in 90 days. And I'd be lying to you if I said, A, if I knew what we were going to do with it, and B, what the long-term effect of the community will be. But I know the work that we've done, I think, has made Braddock a better place. But the landscape, literally, overnight in a phone call has changed. It would be the same equivalent kind of shock, perhaps even more so than the steel mill, because 22,000 people in the area don't go to the steel mill for medical emergencies and service. So what does the future of Braddock hold? I'd be lying if I said I knew exactly what that was. But you know, I sure couldn't stop it, and it's not waiting on me. And it'll be interesting to see the next four years of where Braddock goes. But I want to thank everybody here at Pop Tech for inviting me, and it's been a real pleasure. Um, and one last final recommendation is, is that if anyone has any questions about Braddock, you can you'll see pictures online. None of them have been doctored up. It's really a community. Michelle with with Pop Tech actually came down to visit. It's a community that literally has lost 90% of its buildings. Any community you go to, whether it's Camden, go through and do an inventory and take away nine out of every 10 structures and see what you have left to really kind of comprehend. We are not a poor town. We are experimental. Because what do you do? I mean, we're not a town that's down on its luck. Even before the hospital, we were a town that was struggling on our back. And I don't mean to be all down, because I know this is supposed to be up uplifting. <laughs> So it's like, uh, and, and again, we'll, we'll leave that to the other two. And it probably would have been more, <laughs> probably would have been more uplifting if I didn't uh, have to, to make that announcement. And the fallout for that has been enormous. But at any rate, I want to thank everybody for, for being here. It's been a true pleasure and, and a little bit of culture shock, too, I must admit. Um, but thank you very much.